Welcome to Jokmok Winter Market. My name is Björn Hedlund Lanta and I have lived here for many years. Uh, I will teach you about how to dress and behave in this cold weather in the Arctic and sub-Arctic environment of Sweden. Uh, so you can have a comfortable stay when you are visiting our market and this municipality. My background is that I have been for decades working uh, as a military mountain guide and teaching special forces and Swedish army officers how to dress and survive, but not only survive, but also work and conduct cold weather operations when it can be down to below 40 degrees minus, which are the situation here in Jokmok some weeks a year, mainly in February. So we always have to think about the climate and the temperature when we are conducting uh, our daily life. And people get adapted to this. So we have a saying that uh, in the autumn you always freeze in the winter and in the, win in the spring you, you sweat in the spring. And that is because when it's zero minus five degrees in the autumn, all of us are freezing. And when it's the same temperature in March and the sun comes back, we think, oh, we, ne we need to go to the beach. It's so warm, we want, want to undress. And that's that we have a human adaptation system in our body and it takes maybe six to eight weeks to adapt to the cold. And when all the hormones has reset, then we don't feel the cold the same way as we do when we came here in the first place. And that means that as a visitor, maybe you can feel afraid of the cold and you will have an, a, a response in the body that is not so, so nice if you don't know some knowledge about how to dress and how to, to manipulate your body so you feel well in these situations. And this is what I want to talk about today. And this is just the basic course. You can, I can talk for weeks about this and you need to really come and experience and train with someone that knows this is uh, very professional to be able to go outside for days because the, the cold is real and if you do mistakes in minus 30, minus 40, uh, the outcome can be very bad. In minus 40 you don't have any, any chance to do any mistakes. In minus 20 you can maybe do one or two mistakes. But when it's colder it's really really sharp you know. You have, you have to uh, think that this, this is reality. For example if you're going by a car to Jokmok you have to prepare what to have in the car if the car stops in the middle of nowhere. You don't get help in three hours. This can be the reality and, and you have to be prepared. And I hope this video can help you a little to buy the right stuff before you come here or you can also buy in Jokmok. The things, everything I show here is possible to get in Jokmok of course. So I will talk a little about uh, the cold injuries because it's very common when you are out in minus 20 and below that you can get superficial cold injuries uh, on the face for example. And on a white person, you will see it like white spots. I have a white skin, but the white spots look like white snow, really. And you have to be aware of this and look when you feel it's biting in the, in, in the face of cold. Your friend has to look at you every half hour and see if you have some white spots. And if you are a dark skinned, it's more difficult to spy, spot these white spots because they are not white. They can get like purple in, in, in color instead. And if it's dark outside, it's good to have a flashlight with you so you can check your friend every half hour and see if there are some white spots. And what do you do if you get a white spot on the finger or on the face? Is to take your, your bare hand and just put it on top like this. And then you hold like this maybe for five minutes until you feel the warmth comes back. And then after you need to protect this area. Maybe you have a good hat, like me here. So I can, I can protect the area from refreezing. Or maybe you have to go inside and warm up if it's possible for a while. If it feels stiff like ice and you cannot move, if you are very careful and move a little on this white spot, if it's stuck to the bone and the muscles has frozen, then you should go inside and get a doctor's help. 
because then you have a deep tissue injury and, and uh, this has to be treated immediately uh, by, by going inside and, and slowly reheating. But the only thing you should do is get into the warmth or, or use a warm hand like this and nothing else. All you heard about other treatments can be dangerous. So this is the only thing you should do. And usually in the winter time, we have to do this now and then. We get these superficial cold injuries with the, out with the kids. You have to check them out and then you go with your hand for five minutes or two minutes and then they are good to go again. This is, this is important. To be able to fight the hypothermia, if your dress is not enough, you need to start moving. When I'm asleep, uh, my body produces like a normal lamp bulb, maybe 70 watts. When I start moving like this and I'm running, then I can produce like a radiator, 1000 watts. And that means that I can reheat myself. So I will heat up my, warm, my clothes so they can you know, protect me more. And especially the hands and the feet are very susceptible to, to the cold injuries. And then I have to move my core to get warm, but I also need to be able to, to do like this. So if I have cold fingers, I should do like this for maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. I can run in the snow. And can you come here? I have a friend here and I will show you some tricks with a friend. The friend is the best thing in the, in the winter time. So we hold like this and the feet and the toes are really cold. So then we kick like this. You kick also. And we kick and we kick and we kick and it takes minutes. Don't stop until you have re reheated your feet. And then you can do other things. You can fight. It's really good. Fight me. Not, not like this. Start fighting in the snow. This is also very good. After a few minutes you get warm. It's very, very good. Another one is to go like this. If you go like this, you feel how the blood just pushes out in the fingers. And to be able to, to have the stamina to do this when you are really cold and the mental says, I want to sit down and cry. You need to have a friend that kicks your ass and you get going, but you also need energy in your body. Otherwise you get out of energy after, after 15, 30 minutes and then the hypothermia has continues and continues to a, a dangerous situation. But the movement is the most important thing. Many people that are afraid, they stand in the middle of a clothes and try to get warm because they are scared. And this is the worst thing you can do. Out and play in the snow. Kids are very good at this. Thank you. So this is about hypothermia and cold injuries. Now we come to the knowledge of clothing and there is like a few things that it's do not do this in this arctic climates. The first thing is don't use cotton normally in the clothing system. There are some exceptions and I will talk about that later. The second thing, don't use any barriers that protects or stops the moisture from the body to get out like Gore-Tex or other membranes. It's not closing for this climate. They will get you cold and in a, in a worse situation. We need to be able to perspire our sweat through the layers outside. So this is the two key areas. So let's see when you come to the winter market, what is the activity level? The activity level is very low and we're outside in minus 30 degrees say. And then sometimes we have to go inside, we eat, we go in and looking at exhibitions and then we get really hot. So it has to be easy to change. So the best material for the winter is the natural materials from animals. You see my, my hat, you see my gloves, all is uh, natural materials fr from animals and furs and, and feathers and these kind of things. They are the best. Then we have synthetics that try to, to look and be able to do the same things that the natural materials and some are quite good at this. But, but the natural materials usually are the better ones. And when it comes to the inner clothing, we talk about wool. Wool is the, mo the most 
beneficial material because it can uh, suck in uh, wet sweat from your body and keep it inside of the fibers so it doesn't feel wet. And then it, when you are, are activating yourself, it moves the sweat out in a pace that is enough for the body to be reheated but not too fast so you get cold. So that's why it's very good if you are going fast, going slow, you will feel, still will feel dry but you will not get cold. And uh, this person here is dressed like this and this is a dress for the Jokmok winter market. Uh, <coughs> she has a wool shirt, wool hat and she has also a wool balaclava, wool pants, wool socks, twice, thin one, thick one, and she has also felt boots. These felt boots can evaporate the moisture out of the boot when the body sweats. That's the problem with the feet and the hands. It's like we sweat every 24 hours like a sh little schnapps and that schnapps of water is poured into the shoe or into the gloves and this is a problem. But if you have boots like this, the sweat will not stop inside but it will go outside like you see here and then go out of the feet and then you're still having dry feet. So basic layer wool and then on top of that you should use a thick jacket, isolation jacket. For example, this is a down jacket, uh, but you can also have synthetic jackets. And it's, it's, you know, it's about bulk. You thick, the thicker they are, the better. And I will also say in the winter market, it's good to have like a basic, not too much clothes on under, and a really, really big jacket, a really big pants. And then you can just undress the big jacket when you go inside and not get too warm. If you are out and doing like a day trip or two day trips and you have multi layers on you, it, it's very hard to adjust the temperature in the marketplace because you have to take 10, 10, pants, uh, 10, 10 jackets off you before you get like cool enough to be inside and look at these things. So I would say get, get a big jacket. And I would prefer down jackets because they are lighter and more versatile. And if you see at my jacket, it's a long one. And it's a long one because the cold uh, really cools the fatty parts of my body more easily. So the butt and also here in the legs are usually cold even if I have isolation pants on my, my body. So that's why it's good to have a long. So I have double layers here of isolation. It also isolates the wind when the wind comes and, and cool me down. And I, if I'm sitting down, I also get protected when I sit down on something, so I'm more protected. And the wind cannot get, get inside of my back here. So it's quite easy to dress for the Jokmok winter market. You need to have like a thick layer of isolation and then thin, thin uh, under wool uh, clothing underneath big uh, gloves, warm gloves from natural materials, uh, down is a good one, uh, sheep skin, sheep, uh, what do you say, sheep, sheep wool is also good, and then you need good boots, uh, especially winter market, maybe you don't have good boots, so what is, what is a good boot, uh, it can be almost anything, but the most important thing is that when you choose the boot, it should be two sizes bigger, than the normal. So I have 46, but my winter boots are 48, 49. And that's because uh, the, the toes has to be, be able to move, so they keep warm. I need to have two, at least two thick socks inside my boots, and I also need a felt insole. So it's very important to have something that isolates from the cold ground through the boot, so even if you have like a normal boot for the city, if you have it big enough and you can put inside a big felt from felt and wool sole, these boots can still uh, be quite okay during like a few hours in the day here. 
So the trick is, regardless of what kind of uh, shoes you're wearing, you need to change socks regularly. If you're out for days, you should change socks every hour and dry the other pairs. I have two pairs on my feet, like this woman here. Thick layer, and then a little thinner sock under. And she then walks in her boot for one hour. And as I told you, we are radiators when we are moving. So, if I undress a little here under my ISO pants, I have something. I have my other pair of socks. Because in this region, we are very warm and we are also warm in the armpits. So during one hour of walking, the little sweat I had in my, in my shoes, in my socks, they will dry when they are drying here on my thighs. And when I change every hour, I don't build up the sweat in the boot. So the boot stays dry for days. This is the key. If you're walking in your Jokmok winter market, maybe you change shoes, you change uh, socks maybe every three hours and you will be fine. Because when the feet start freezing, the whole body will, will start freezing. And this is how to avoid this. It's also the same. We go from the boots to the hands, is that is the other part that is sensitive. And when it comes to cold injuries, you should never use bare hands in the winter time. Because if you take in metal in a thermos or something, the metal conducts the, the cold 9600 times faster than the air. So it's like to putting your hand on a hot stove. You get a, a burn injury, but it, it, it burned by cold. So always use I have many pairs of hands, uh, of gloves. Use always a thin wool liner when you're working outside with things. Never take a bare hand on stuff. So this uh, inner boot is made of handmade wool and it's made by the entrepreneurs of Sapme. And you find them on the winter market and this is made with the best deal you can do there to keep your feet warm. And it's possible to use in normal shoes if you have like two numbers bigger than normal. You just put them in and you have a felt sole under and you're good to go in minus 40 degrees for a day. When it comes to gloves, it's like the feet. It also evaporates a lot of moisture and we have the moisture buildup problem. So we need to have an inner glove that can take moisture and evaporate it. But sometimes we need a protective layer on it because we are working in the snow and it can get wet. And the best one is to have a leather uh, outer glove because a leather outer glove like this with sturdy leather is able to take in fire and hot sub objects. And that can be very handy when we always use fires in the winter time. If you have synthetic fibers, your glove will burn up. And this glove has nothing inside, it's just leather. So it's very versatile that we have gloves inside and then we adapt during what we are doing. Sometimes we go like this. If I'm out skiing and not touching the snow, I usually just go like this. But the, suddenly I should, should use a shovel or something. I have to protect the wool from the water, the snow. We have also other kind of gloves. This is a skin fur on the outside. And that means that even in below zero, the skin inside is warm and can move moisture out of the glove. So that's why the Sami shoes, the traditional Sami shoes that has uh, uh, this uh, fur on the outside can also evaporate exactly the same way that the felt boot does. But it's more robust against water. This is another uh, glove. So the inner side is wool pile and the outer side is felt. So it's very warm 
and the moisture build up will go out of the glove and keep you dry. So I usually have this under always and then I can put this on top. I get warm and you see this is a mitten, it's not a five finger glove. Five finger gloves are usually too cold to have many minutes. Maybe I need to do it during short activities like maybe skiing or shoveling but then usually this will freeze into something like this and to start using it you have to get the ice out like this and then you have this liner so you don't freeze your hands you use it for a few minutes and you let it freeze then in your pocket again but normally it's mittens that is designed to keep the fingers together that keeps your fist and hands warm and you always adapt so even if you are cold when you have the fingers like this if you close your hand and protect your fingers you will be able to walk with quite thin gloves outside so always adapt if you get warm you open the hands and walk like this and when you're cold you micro adapt and you close your hands There is also synthetic big gloves and also wool gloves, no, uh, uh, down gloves. And especially sensitive people, many women have cold hands. And I would suggest that you look for gloves that are like ad made for Himalayan expeditions and this kind. Normal winter gloves is not enough for many people. You really need the down the down mittens, the really, really big ones to protect because the fingers has no muscles to warm them. It's very thin. So, so it's important that you get the biggest glove you can find. Sometimes when we're digging in the snow, we put on a shell that is like totally waterproof. And in this situation, a Gore-Tex glove can be of value, but this is also a normal plastic glove that our kids have uh, when they are digging in the snow. It, it serves the same purpose. So when you come to the Arctic region, to Jokmuk Winter Market, a few summary points to remember. The temperature here can be between zero degrees and minus 40. Normally in December, it drops down to maybe 10 to 20 degrees. Some days, some maybe weeks in February, in January, it can drop down to minus 40, but the normal temperature range is maybe mostly minus 30. So normally 15 to 25, I would say. This is, this is the reality you will meet, but some days it go out to zero as well. And uh, what you should remember is that you should, you should get dressed properly, use natural materials, especially wool and down is the best way to go. Buy a big winter jacket that just keeps you warm and think about the hands. Biggest glove you can find. And when it comes to the boots, buy two sizes bigger than the normal thing. And the last but not least, come on. <laughs> Take care of your friend and watch each other so you feel comfortable and you don't get white spots on the faces. Bye bye from Jokmok!